Hello and a very warm welcome to all the IELTS Daily fans. Today we have a super special video because we're joined by none other than the person who blew up our channel. It is Saskia. Hello, Saskia. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm fantastic. It is so good to have you here. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And I want to just start this video by saying Thank you very much for coming along and doing the previous videos because you made such an impact on our channel. Oh, thank you. I'm probably of sure that you've seen that. Um, what I want to do today is talk to these guys about you. We want to learn about you, okay. put to bed some of the myths and some of the kind of uh, untruths that are available <laughs> on the internet, and then learn a little bit more about who Saskia is, where Saskia is going, and maybe learn a little bit more about your like past life. Okay, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Fantastic. If you guys are ready, I'm ready, let's go. Do you know how many views you have had on the two videos that you've made for us so far? I haven't actually looked at them very recently, so I wouldn't know. Would it surprise you if I said there's over 7 million? <laughs> 7 uh -huh. million views and one video alone had 114,000 likes. 114,000 likes. Now that is unprecedented, <laughs> that's phenomenal. That's a lot of likes. That's a lot of likes and I just wanted to, to, to say that I wasn't expecting this. When we hired the students, there were six of you. Yeah. And tell us a story about how that came about. Well, I was here for my break and Chris, because you work at the university, you were just like, you know, is there anyone around, anyone free to come help out? And I was like, yeah, sure. Some pocket money can never hurt. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did not expect that reaction or mm. anything, any of that at all. Neither did I. And so we filmed everything on two days, right? Yep. And your videos just blew up. Everybody just loved your answers. And I'm so to... glad I could help. It's honestly. really, really helpful. And what I want to do is just talk a little bit about some of the comments that we found on the uh, comment section of the videos. Okay. I'm going to hand you one now and you're going to read it and tell me about it because I don't know about this. Have a look at this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the story with this? Can you read it for the students? He really said Sasuke. I was so ready to scream Sasuke Naruto. So, have you watched Naruto? Saskia, okay, I am yeah, no, fair twice enough. as old as you I, are. I don't know why I asked. <laughs> but it used to be on Cartoon Network. It's an anime TV show that was really, really popular. I think it still is. It was really popular when I was a kid. Um, and a lot of my friends used to call me Sasuke in school because it was so similar to Saskia. And... Was it Sasuke or Sasuke? I'm actually not too sure. I never yeah. really watched it. I think they pronounce it Sas like almost like your name, but they write it really differently. Sasuke. Mm, maybe. And all of these people on the comments suggested that I completely messed up your name. Oh, no. Is no, it no. True you know I... my name, Chris. Okay. You know my name very well. Good. Thank you. Um, so, Saskia, there's another question here uh, or another comment. Um, what about this one? Read it out. I don't want... <laughs> oh no! Um, do I have to? I don't want to embarrass you, but read it. Uh, someone give this girl a Hollywood contract. Someone give this girl a Hollywood contract. They loved the way that you came across on the camera. Oh, I'm so I, glad. I think you're really natural. I think that was a, one of the, the pleasing factors of having you in front of the screen because you just were so natural. So um, it was great to have you. It's great. Well, if somebody does want to give me a Hollywood contract um, <laughs> after I finish uni, uh, yes, please. And we'll talk about your education very soon. Okay. Um, but how do, if somebody wants to kind of learn more about you, you've got an Instagram profile, right? I do have an Instagram profile. My Instagram is S underscore S-K-I-A. But you can also find me at Precision Management. That's my modeling agency. Excellent. And you're also on TikTok, is that right? I'm getting there, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know what TikTok is. I'm too old for TikTok. So um, what about this uh, comment? Ah, this channel is BS. They hire Instagram models for views and likes. I'm sorry, no, I am not an Instagram model. Modeling is my career, but that's not why Chris hired me. Chris hired me because I'm a student and I was also free. And look, 
And that's really true because you've taken the IELTS test before, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And what was your experience of the IELTS test? Um, it was honestly, I did my exam in 2018, the very end of 2018. So I don't really remember the test as vividly as somebody who did it last year would. But um, it wasn't too difficult. But at the same time, I did grow up being bilingual. So that would be, you know, just easier for me to do that and exam. That's clearly put you in good stead for your university life and, and education. Let's talk a little bit about where you came from. And that comes from this comment here. Read that comment out. No way she just learned that speaking in school or watching movies. She probably lived in a native English speaking country and picked it up. Is that true? Did you live or did you grow up in a native English speaking country? I grew up in Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka has three popular languages, English, Sinhalese and Tamil, not in that order. Um, I did go to an English speaking school, but I was taught Sinhalese. My parents made sure that I was very much in touch with my culture, regardless of which school I went to. And my home, I was always bilingual. And I grew up speaking both English and Sinhalese because my parents always felt like that was very important for me and made me who I am. Is education important to your parents? Very much so. And it's important to me too. Excellent. And you plan to stick out your degree? I will be doing that, yes. Amazing. Um, and this is quite a controversial one. And I probably need to explain a little bit. I might give you um, this one to just ponder at the moment. And I'll explain a little bit because okay. lots of people were asking. Sure. Why is pronunciation just an eight? So if you remember from the video, mm -hmm. there was one word. Do you remember that one word? Oh, I do remember that one word. Advertisement. You pronounced it advertisement. I pronounced it advertisement. No, that's not right. <laughs> See, now you've got me confused. Advertisement. Advertisement. So this word, advertisement, I had never heard it before pronounced like that. And the comment section blew up because it turns out that in South India and in Sri Lanka, lots of people pronounce, pronounce it, it advertisement. advertisement. And yes. I just never heard of that before. And so in the IELTS test, there are kind of standard ways to pronounce things. And I tried to explain it in my video. Yes. And I said that if you go to a country which is a native English speaking country, where English is the first language for the majority of people, you probably wouldn't find advertisement. And it just made my ears stick up uh, because I was like, I've never heard that before. And one of the, the, the ways of uh, assessing is listening for those types of um, words that don't normally, you don't normally hear during your everyday conversation. Mm -hmm. And I learned something from that video of that people in, in Sri Lanka say advertisement. It's very normal. That's the normal pronunciation, the standard pronunciation for advertisement. Exactly. And so probably, and I, I said this, that in the test, it is really likely that you would have scored nine. I yeah. think examiners probably would have put that aside and said, actually, that's a standard feature for, for Sri Lanka and you would have scored a nine. So well, I'm happy I to know that. Probably a little bit too harsh on you. <laughs> well, that's I, fine. It's only way to apology. learn. I owe you an apology. Oh, thank you. Um, let's have a look at another question now. Now, one thing that I learned when I watched this video is references to popular culture. And have a look at this comment here and see if you know what it means. So oh. read it out. Blue Steel is a comical modeling facial expression featured in the 2001 comedy film Zoolander. Zoolander is a great movie. You really, really should, if you have a minute, watch it. I've never seen Zoolander. So can you confirm that you were referencing that? Yes, film? I was. Are you a big fan of Zoolander? Um, I've watched it a couple of times when I was younger. And yes, I do like it. So can you do a blue steel smile for oh, me? Oh, I really couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, another really contentious and discussed issue in the comment section of your second video. This one, uh, you probably have to do a little bit of explaining and have a read of this comment. Okay. And the thing she told about Sri Lanka is a lie. She was like having tap water in Sri Lanka makes you sick. But really most of the bottled water companies use to sell the same tap water by bottling it out with different brand names. Laughing emoji. Anyways, her English is top class. Well, I appreciate that you enjoyed my English. <laughs> um, but I think, so the thing is, Chris, um, 
The water you drink, your body gets used to the water that you drink on a regular basis. And when I moved to Australia from Sri Lanka, I couldn't drink the tap water here. That's not to say that Australian tap water isn't drinkable. It's just that my body wasn't used to it. And when I go to rural areas in Sri Lanka, I can't always drink the tap water the same way when I go to India. That's not to say that people in those areas can't drink the tap water. But obviously, it was a generalization that I made during the exam because it was neither the time nor the place to make a very specific statement and clarify what I meant. It was a practice exam. That's right. And when you're under these exam conditions... Nobody's fact-checking me. Exactly. And nobody's perfect. You can't get it all, always right. I think you also said six litres of water. and you I probably did. Clearly, I do not drink six litres of water. You clearly meant six pints of water, which is about two point something yeah. litres. A couple of and glasses, six glasses. That's, that's the normal, right? Exactly. So under these exam conditions, I think people <laughs> didn't give you the benefit of the oh, doubt. Oh, I know. Please give me a break. <laughs> Um, and this is something that I think lots of people should consider. When they take the test, there's, they don't actually have to speak. With... It's not important to be right. Exactly. What's important is to be able to speak naturally and get up there and hold a conversation. I couldn't agree more. So all those people who were <laughs> kind of flogging you, oh, uh, no. they just should give you a bit of an easier time. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> um, that's part and parcel of being in the spotlight. You get it? used to it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So that brings us to the end of the comment section, I want to hear about you. So you grew up in Sri Lanka. I did. You went to an English speaking school. Mm -hmm. um, how has that benefited you? Um, it definitely improved my English and it meant that I both got the support in learning English at home as well as at school. So I learned how to write my essays in English, answer questions in English, as well as conduct my education in English, which really helped when I moved to an English-speaking country like Australia. Yeah. And what values did your parents instill in you as a person? 100% the value of education. They always told us that anybody can take anything away from you, but they cannot take your education. Fantastic. That's one thing that she, re my, both my parents really instilled in myself and my brother. Yeah. And you came to Australia. Was it a big move, like coming to a, a new country and new culture? I had never been to Australia before. So when I got off that flight, I was overwhelmed. And I was lucky that I had my parents here because I don't really have a lot of family in Australia or no one that I'm exceptionally close to. Um, and yeah, I was definitely overwhelmed. But I remember thinking, I was in Melbourne and I, I remember thinking, I was just like, you know what? It doesn't matter if you don't like it here. You're already, you're in uni. What are you going to do? Go home? No. You're going to suck it up. You're going to find something to love about it. And honestly, when I found the time to go about the city by myself and get my bearings, I love Melbourne. Yeah. I love living here and it feels like home now. And so do you have many relatives back in Sri Lanka? Um, not too many. I Just my close family and then we have family scattered all over the world. Yeah. And with the current lockdown of, of borders, I, how are you feeling about you know, potentially not returning to Sri Lanka for the foreseeable future? Is it having an impact on you? It's been a while, definitely. And I'm very close to my family, so it is difficult for me being so far away from home. But you know, we call on a regular basis. We're very much in touch. And I think we're all playing the long game. There's so many people who are in similar or even worse situations than we are. And I think that we're very fortunate to have technology at our fingertips that, you know, I can FaceTime my parents at any time of day. And I'm lucky that I have parents that are able to answer and be there for me. I genuinely don't know what I would do. If I was, you know, a young person like you are, 19, 20 years old, in a foreign country with no real ability to return home, because that's the reality that you can't return home because if you were to go home, you can't come back and continue your studies. You are so brave and I think it's really admirable that Thanks. you've managed to take a really strong stand and, and say, do you know what? Education's really important. It is. And you will see your family. I and, will, yeah. I will, one and day. Well done to you for, for having Thank that you. great mindset. So that's um, now. What about the future? Where's Saskia going? Well, <laughs> Saskia is currently working as a model at Precision Management, 
but I'm also a student. So I'm currently doing my Bachelor of Arts majoring in political science and I'm looking to go to law school. It's either that or doing a master's in international relations. But I'd like to work with people. I'd like to do something that helps people either through a foundation or even starting my own organization where I might be able to help people and make a difference. Great. So if people want to follow you, they can follow your life on Instagram yes. or on TikTok. Learn a little bit about you. And because your English is so phen phenomenal, I think it would be a great opportunity for them to learn with you um, on that journey. I would well. love to make some sort of channel where I'm able to help out. Yeah. Where do you think you'll settle in, in the future? Do you think you'll be here in Australia or do you think you'll return back to Sri Lanka? I don't know yet. I don't think there's any way to really tell. But I'm happy wherever I go, I think I'll find a way to make it a home. What a great philosophy, <laughs> especially at such a young age. It's, it's really admirable, so great job to you. Um, for you guys, I hope that was an interesting and worthwhile experience. Remember, if you want to learn more about Saskia, she's going to do some more part two questions. Is that right? Yes, I will. <laughs> and those part two questions um, are quite difficult. I don't know if you remember in the test, having to speak for over two minutes, uh, over one minute, fewer than two minutes is it's really It's a good thing tricky. I'm very chatty. <laughs> <laughs> good. So thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you for Saskia for coming nice. along. It's been a pleasure and we'll see you in the future. Definitely. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, because I, I, in EAP we were really strict. And they were, EAP was so strict. Yeah, and too much so probably. Like oh, I don't know. I probably needed it, but the worst part is all the all the referencing details that Louisa drilled into my head. I went out of foundation. Like I don't know how to reference anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she would be so disappointed <laughs> in me.